Art Farm is the place to see whatever your dreams may be. Watch a creation before your eyes at artfarm.tv. At artfarm.tv. Just gonna give people a couple minutes to all get here. Nice seeing you. Alexa, repeat song. Hey, Mike, if you're on, chat with me from your RS account. We're just going to wait until a few more people are have joined us. eight o'clock right now we'll give it till eight eight oh two let's eight oh one now my time we'll wait one more minute and then I'll tell you guys the story if you're not a member of art farm yet it's a free membership you should sign up it'll only take you as long as it takes you to enter an email in so, and we can chat. When you guys are here, let me know. All right. We're going to go into it in about 20 seconds here. Isn't this cool how I'm behind bars? All right. Well. I don't know how many of you are here, but let's get into it. So it was 2014. Actually, it was this week, five years ago. Um, I was freshly divorced. I had the two kids. And, um, you know, I my son got an earache at school. Well, not at school, but... He woke up one morning and he was like, Dad, my ear hurts so bad, like, I just want to cry. And, um, you know, like, earaches hurt. So, I remember getting when I was a kid. Uh, I was like, well, you know, you can, stay, you can stay home today and I'll go get you stuff you need. So, I went to the store and got, you know, talked to a pharmacist and asked him what kind of, what kind of things would help him. And um, so, I nursed his ear back to health. And uh, the next day, he was feeling a little better, but it was still hurting pretty bad, so I let him stay home that day, too. Well, in Polk County in Texas, they have weird laws that I've never really seen anywhere else. I'm from Nevada. I, I My kids uh, were in Harris County schools before, and I never had this issue. But uh, I got a fine in the mail saying that I owed $89 for um, my son missing two days of school. And I kind of looked at it and I was like, yeah, right, no way, get out of here. I'm like, I take care of my kids, that's none of your business. And um, 
you know, their attendance was good. Uh, it was fine. They're, they hadn't missed any other days other than um, the two days he was out. And so I, I just kind of dismissed it. I'm like, what is this? This is ridiculous and silly. This, you know, no way. Granted, I should have called and been like, what is this? Like, and found out more information. But at the time, I was going through a lot of stuff. And I was like, no, this is silly. I don't have time for that. Well, two weeks later, you know, oh, let me go back a little bit. At the time, this was my life. This was my life. I would wake up in the morning. I would get my daughter's, I'd get my daughter ready for school, do her hair, um, you know, make sure she looks pretty for school, make sure she has everything she needs. I would help the kids with their homework. Um, I would do my art projects and get everything ready to uh, go to the conventions and get my website ready. That was just my life. That's still kind of my life. But so in my mind, I'm like, I, I'm a good dad. This is crazy. Don't don't talk to me about my ch parent contribute to non-attendance. You know, that's crazy. Um, I'm just take a dad, a single dad taking care of my kids. Well, two weeks later, um, I dropped my daughter off at school. I dropped my son off at school. And on my way back home from dropping my son off at school, a cop follows me back to my house. And then... I had, a, I had property right out in the middle of nowhere in Livingston, Texas. And I think it was on like three acres of land. Big old four-story, four-layered house. Um, so he follows me back into my house, and I get out, and I'm like, can I help you? And he was like, uh, I, I followed you back so you didn't have to tow your car. I was like, I don't need to tow my car. My car's fine. He was like, well, you got a warrant for your arrest. And I'm like, no, I don't. And he's like, uh, he was like, for a parent contributing to non-attendance. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you should have got something in the mail. And he's like, but I got to take you in. So he takes me in and throws me in the cell. This cell was, I, I don't know if it was a holding cell. First, they put me in like this smaller room. And it was kind of like a long room where we're all like sitting there side by side and I'm in there with like um, three guys that were in there for human trafficking uh, another like was with the cartel selling drugs and then there is all these other guys who are like still drunk or on drugs because they were talking to themselves and easily you know pissed off if uh, somebody looked at them you know, so, I, you know, I'm just sitting in there with these guys. And then they move us into another room. And in this room, it's like 50 degrees in there. And it's all metal and concrete, like with bolts sticking up on the ground and stuff like that. And people are just like trying to sleep in there. Well, if you look at oh, right here, this guy, um, he, uh, well, I'll get to that. When I first got in there, the first thing I see is a bunch of awkward, probably alpha male egos sitting in the corner, not talking to each other and just being really awkward because um, there's a lot of there's a lot of tension in those rooms, I guess. I don't know. So I stayed by the front, and you know I'm a, I'm a little different. Like so, they're all in the corner. I sat and I sat by the front door. I sat Indian style on the ground. I started noticing these little these little bugs crawling along the crack of the the wall where I was sitting and I started squishing them against the wall like that. And I made a um uh, you guys know me, I, I'm always like painting cats and stuff like that, so I, I made me a squished bug cat piece of art. And so that's that's what they observed me doing. So I I was okay with them believing that I was you know I'm a little crazy. And but I was in there for four hours. I, I don't even remember how or why I got out. I think I, I got to talk to a judge and then uh, I bailed myself out. 
by calling a bail bondsman person when they finally let me take a call. But so I'm in there with him. That's me. And then the guy next to me is a guy that had meth in his system and uh, he got brought in on assault and battery. And then the guy next to this guy was in there. So it was me and three other guys. Now, the one on the bottom here, he got kicked out quickly because he was making a scene. He was like banging on the, he was banging on the, on the door and screaming and uh, he kept screaming, uh, I want my root beer. And uh, I, I don't know, I guess like when they brought him in, they took, he had a root beer and a sandwich. And they took his root beer and a sandwich. So he was just like pissed off that he didn't have his root beer and a sandwich. So he's like, give me my root beer and sandwich. You can't take my root beer and sandwich. So, and he had In God We Trust right here. And this, uh, I keep pointing to the wrong one. This guy right here asked that guy next to me. Um, he, he kept trying to get him to calm down. He's like, man, just relax. And he wouldn't really buck up to this guy, but, like, he was still perturbed. Well... Um, what these people were in for was interesting too. This guy here was a safe thief. And, and after this guy left down here, it was just me and these two guys. And then these two guys started talking and I was just still sitting down there squishing bugs against the wall and listening. But he was a safe thief and he was talking about like the mistake he made, why he got caught, and stuff like that and it's interesting because when he was asked what he was in for he didn't say I committed a crime like he, he, he didn't say he said it like it was his job he was like I'm a safe thief like what is your job I'm an artist what is your job oh I'm a plumber this guy was like I'm a safe thief so and he he was talking about all the different places he's gone and uh, stolen safes and broken into them. But he was a pretty intelligent guy, so I thought he was fascinating. The guy next to him was like a petty car thief. And, you know, so they're going back on different jails they've been in and uh, their favorite jobs and stuff. So it was kind of interesting, even though it was freezing in there. It was like 50 degrees. I was so cold. There's nowhere comfortable to be in. It's jail. I guess it's not supposed to be. Well, um, after this, the, the guy next to the safe thief li uh, leaves. It's just me and him. So, like, you know, he started talking to me. And then, you know, I'm not really crazy. So I started talking back. And he started telling me, um, like the way he breaks into safes and stuff like that. And he says the biggest hoop he has to jump through is when they're drilling into the safes, the sparks and the metal that's flying around in there falls down. And if there's any paper money or documents in there, it normally burns holes in them, burns them up, if not burning them completely up, if enough oxygen is able to get through the holes that he drilled in there. And... He was like, so this last job, I burnt, you know, I burnt most of the money in there. And I was like, that's, I was like, that's, that's interesting. I was like, why don't you just take like, get like a fish pump and like take like a gallon, like a milk jug gallon that's empty and fill it with water. And just like when you, he explained that like when he drills the holes, he does like small, he'll drill like a small hole and then a bigger hole and then a bigger hole until he can get something in there to open it. And um, I was like, why don't you take a fish pump and like a, a gallon jug of water and when you have the little holes in there, they're probably not as big as sparks because he said that the bigger sparks came from the larger drill bit. Put a tube in there with the little hole and fill it up with water and then drill the big hole in there. And then drill another one at the bottom to let all the water out. That way the money didn't get burned up. He was like, I didn't think about, about that. That's a really good idea. He's like, I'm going to have to try that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I was just, uh, 
I'll be quiet now. Like, I'm not contributing to any of that stuff. I'm just here because my son had an earache. Anyway, that's pretty much the jail story. I was stuck with in in a cell with cartel members at one point, with uh, human traffic traffickers, um, a, a lifetime safe thief, a petty car thief, someone violent that was amped up on methamphetamines, and the dad that tended his uh, son's earache. So that's my jail story that's that's my criminal um that's my criminal history so what another interesting facet to this story is when i came home i was telling stories to all my friends and family about the the guys that were in there and i'm able to do this thing where i have a really good memory the way people look and i can draw pretty much anything i see in my mind so I drew these to show the people that were in the cell with me and uh, what each one of them looked like. And it's interesting because I actually, um, Kaylin found this, and this is my mug shot. Now, I drew, I drew all these from memory. So this was just yesterday or the day before I was telling her what I, um, what I was doing. I was going to tell you guys the jail story, and I was like, is there any way you could bring up my mug shot? So she found it, but check this out. That just shows you right there that this is him. That's the guy. And I drew him right out of memory. And there's me at the top. So what I did is I put all four pieces I did together. You know, all the jailbirds that were in there with me. I put them on a print. Basically, I just wanted to sh let you guys know about the story and actually show you Art Farm as well. It's pretty cool. Um, so far, nobody has bought prints from Art Farm. So if you guys want one of these, I made them cheap. I made them like 10 bucks. It would be good for a conversational piece if you hang, in your, hang it on your wall at home. You know, put it in your man cave, put it in your girl cave. That's what she said. Um... Anyway, if you scroll down in my profile, you will see the print right there, and you can get it for 10 bucks. You will be the first person to buy a print from Art Farm, and you'll have a cool conversational piece. So that's the jail story, and I'll leave you guys with that. i got to figure out how to get out of here.